Hey guys, it's Christina here. I hope you are having an amazing day. Um, so for those of you who are new to my space here, I'm a naturopath, herbalist, life coach, gaps practitioner, and carnivore. Uh, and you know, I share my journey on carnivore here. Not that I'm saying everybody has to be carnivore. Um, I do work a lot in the low carb space and as well as like that gut healing space, but also with hyper carnivore, keto, etc., etc. Anyway, all that stuff aside, I just went to the chemist and I don't usually go to the chemist because it's not a place that I frequent often, but because we're traveling, I don't really have a postal address to get stuff sent to at this point in time. I may work out that whole system at some point in time, but I haven't done it yet. Anyway, so I went to the chemist because I'm doing a sardine fast at the moment. So if you've been following my page, you'll know that for the last, this is day three, so for the last two days, all I've been eating is sardines and I have been tracking what's been going on with my blood glucose um, and I ran out of ketone strips. So I went to the chemist to go buy some ketone strips. So for those of you who want to know what I use, I just get the Optimum, um, the Freestyle Optimum and they it tests ketones at the same time. Of course, nearly a car accident in front of me then. Gee whiz. Um, so they test ketones, it tests blood glucose and ketones. So I've got both the strips here, one for ketones, one for one for ketones, one for glucose. Anyway, so I went in to get some of those because I really definitely want to know what my blood glucose is doing and what my ketones are doing, particularly tomorrow, because I end the fast at 8.30 um, tomorrow morning is when my sardine fast finishes, when I complete the 72 hours of that fast. Um, and so I'm going to do a YouTube video, of course, about that, sharing about my experience, um, you know, why it works and all of that type of stuff. Uh, feel free, if you're watching live as well, ask any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Um, so I'll do a live on that. But I also want to, I want to do a live video recording of, um, so I'll do a video, it won't be live, but I will record on my video me testing my blood glucose as well as me testing my ketones um, and show you what that actually is. So I needed these ketones strips in order to be able to do that and to be able to do that video. So I went to the, to the chemist and I was like really reminded about a lot of things. One is why I am carnivore. And that is there was a poor lady there um, I would say she's probably like, I'm 43. She was definitely a couple of decades older than me, I think. So I would say she'd probably be in her late 50s, 60s, how old she was. And she was saying, oh, I feel really sorry for the, the ladies who are having to fill my order today because she had clearly a lot of prescription medication. And then, you know, I, I tend to try and keep to myself because I, I don't really feel like it's my place to tell people that, you know, I don't really feel like I should be telling them, hey, there's some other options, et cetera, et cetera, unless they kind of invite me into that conversation. Otherwise, I just kind of keep to myself. Like it's not really my place to, to go and tell them um, that maybe they could give something else a try um, unless I've really engaged in that conversation. Uh, it's a hard, it's hard to know what people actually would, would like because maybe she would have appreciated me actually saying, hey, if you thought about carnivore. Um, but anyway, she started to talk a little bit like I just let her talk. And one of the things that she talked about was that, you know, she can't eat sugar and she can't eat salt and she can't. Eat, I'm just like, oh, dear, I'm like the wrong person to tell these things to. I really am like I don't eat sugar. Um, but, you know, salt is really actually good for you. And um, there are a few situations where you need to be really mindful of salt, in particular if you have got a congenital heart condition. But for majority of people, when it comes to high blood pressure, the research on salt actually reducing blood pressure was 0.001%. That's how much reducing salt in your diet reduces or has an effect on your blood pressure. Now, this is where science pisses me off because they use language that makes the layperson think that this that reducing salt in your diet is really significant and creates a big impact. When actually the truth is the term significant when it comes to science, all that actually means in science lingo is that they're pretty sure that the action that was taken created the result that was received. And so I don't know about you, but I know for me, if I read the science and I understood that what they meant by their little comment on the significant reduction in 
uh, blood pressure, if I understood that that meant they were pretty sure that by reducing salt, you reduce the blood pressure by 0.001%, I think I would go, I don't really care what salt does because <laughs> like, I'm just going to enjoy salting my food. Anyway, that's a side note. So as I, I was only slightly engaging this lady in the conversation um, and she was just sharing bits and pieces because she was waiting for them to get her stuff and it really was a big bundle of stuff and um, I then had to wait for her to get, um, you know, so by the time she was served, then I could just go, hey, can I have my ketone strips, please? Um, by the time I did that and then got to the checkout, she was at the checkout and for all of her medication, it was around about 150 and that was because, like, that was PBS. If she had to pay for that out of pocket, it well, would, well and truly would have been well over $400 worth of product. And I was just, just sitting there and this just reminds me of, like, this is why I do the work that I do is that we don't have to live like that. Like, you know, and I don't know everything about her situation, but it just reminded me of like my mom. My mom and dad both had this big canister of medication. So it was like stuff for heartburn and stuff for stopping them feeling nauseous and stuff to make them sleep and stuff to make their blood pressure lower and stuff to make their blood sugar lower. Like there was just so much stuff in this box that they had of medication. And there was stuff there for chronic pain because like, you know, all the other stuff was causing pain issues and it just like it remind reminded me of that and just that sadness of actually thinking i don't i don't want people to have to live like that like if people want to choose to live like that then i'm okay for them actually having a choice but it saddens me that most people don't know that they have a choice that most doctors don't inform them that they have a choice or don't even know that they have a choice in order to be able to inform them of that choice and that for me I find incredibly sad um, but also to I, I felt really sorry for this woman because I was was watching her and she was interacting with us and she you know she seemed like a really beautiful lovely lady and it didn't seem like this is actually what she wanted but for so many people they don't actually they don't know that they have a choice they are in a space of hopelessness that this is the only choice that they actually have. And I was reminded again why I am doing what I am doing because, you know, for me, nine months ago, when I before I started this carnival journey, I was in that space of I have to make a choice because I, like, I knew what my blood glucose was. I wasn't symptomatic. Um, but my blood glucose was definitely like I should have been hospitalized at the numbers. Like if if I'd gone to a doctor and they saw those numbers, they would have put me in hospital based on those numbers. Um, but being an independent uh, health practitioner, I, you know, I was monitoring my own numbers. That's the only reason I actually knew what my numbers were was because I was monitoring my own numbers. And the only real symptom that I had was that I was really tired that I would have a day sleep. And that for me is completely out of character. If I have a day sleep, it's because I'm like zonked. There's nothing left in my tank if I'm having a day sleep. And so for me, um, that was the only symptom. I didn't have the chugging tons of water or any of the other symptoms that you would get with, you know, that would lead you to a doctor to go and get diagnosed with diabetes. So I didn't go down that pathway, but I saw my numbers and I knew that, as a responsible adult that's looking after children and, you know, creating money for my family and all of that type of stuff, I need to make a decision. And that decision is I either go down this pharmaceutical pathway and I go get things like insulin and all of the other drugs that they're going to want to put me on, or I make a radical decision for my own health and I follow through on that. And I made the decision for my own health, which was to go carnival because that's how I know how to reduce blood glucose exceptionally quickly and get it back into control and avoid some of those lifelong sort of damaging effects that you get when it comes to having high blood glucose. Because when you have high blood glucose, you don't only have high blood glucose, you also have high insulin levels. And we don't talk about insulin enough because we focus on glucose, but having high insulin levels is as, is as damaging to your body as having high glucose levels. Now, glucose attacks your single organ. So it's going to attack, sorry, glucose attacks your double organ, sorry. Insulin attacks your single organ. So glucose attacks things like, you know, your kidneys, your eyes, things where you've got two of them. 
that's where you're going to receive the most damage um, initially from high blood glucose levels. Insulin, on the other hand, is going to attack your single organs, so your heart, your liver, um, your single organs, pancreas, etc. And we don't talk about insulin from that perspective. We only talk about glucose. But insulin is as much of an important factor in the damage to our health and the balance of our homeostasis within our health as glucose actually is. And that for me is part of the reason that I'm doing this sardine fast is because I've gotten rid of the easy drop weight. So the so far, for those who, who don't know, I've lost um, 39 kilos so far. And so I've dropped the easy weight because it's the stuff that my body was easily able to access. Now I'm moving into the weight that has been um, much harder because it's been locked away by insulin. So insulin has essentially locked the key on those fat cells and I need to open it back up. And that is why I'm doing the sardine fast because the sardines have short chain triglycerides and medium chain glycerides triglycerides that are able to bypass some of the digestive process that usually like fat usually goes through the lymphatic system into the liver and we need oxbow and all the, all the things in order for it to transport and do that the small chain and the medium chain don't need that they're able to actually move through the portal vein and get into the cells and into the mitochondria and the mitochondria from that space are able to release ketones and the presence of ketones reduces insulin and it's the reduction of the insulin that then allows the lock on my fat cells to actually open so that my body can now tap into the fat cells that have been harder for it to access, A, because they've been there for a really long time, B, because I've had insulin resistance, all of that type of stuff. And so that's part of the reason that I'm actually doing this fat, this sardine fast is to actually open up those fat cells and make them bioavailable so that my body can use them as fat st as storage well, can use that stored fat as food versus it staying stored in my body. And so getting back to my, my story of going into the chemist, I was reminded again why I'm actually doing this. And that is to avoid the scenario that this lady was in. You know, she was 20, maybe 20 years ahead of me in the journey. But, you know, I feel like that that, that, that space is rapidly closing in the sense that I see in my clinic conditions of people in their 30s that I never normally saw until they were in their 50s. And so the lifestyle diseases are rapidly increasing, exponentially and rapidly increasing. So people are getting them younger than they were getting them in previous generations. And so when I was looking at this, I was going, that would be my pathway. You know, if I go down, if I had gone down the medicalized route and did nothing else, that would have been my pathway um, to actually live a life swallowing a ton of pharmaceuticals and it was so funny because well not funny haha but funny interesting uh, because there was a conversation between the pharmacist and the lady receiving these these um chemicals is all i want to call them um receiving these medication and it was you don't need to put vegemite on your toast just sprinkle these on and you're all good and i was like oh well, I know we're making light of it and we are, you know, trying to kind of, yeah, hey, yeah, this is crap, but hey, sprinkle it on your toes type of thing. Um, she doesn't need to eat because, like, she's eating enough of these these chemicals um, and these these drugs that, you know, they were making a joke of it. And it just, it just, like, again, it reminded me of, like, just I'm so glad that that's not the pathway that I'm going on. And it's also the reason that I share here. I share here, I share on YouTube, I share on Twitter, I share on Instagram, I share everywhere I can on TikTok so that people can start to see that there's options and there's choices and this doesn't have to be their pathway. That, you know, yes, maybe there are always going to be people that are going to need some of those medications because we've gotten to them too late. They didn't know before things were happening or, um, you know, their, their lifestyle or their trauma or something else that's actually happened, they're going to need those things. But our goal as health care providers and our healthcare system should be to minimize the need of those things. That's what our goal should be. Even as taxpayers, that should be what our goal should be is to minimize that because the more money we, we spend on pharmaceutical medication, the less we spend on other things that could be benefiting our population as well. And so 
I think it's actually everybody's everybody's got a part to play in a, in a reducing the medic medication consumption but it does go in the opposite space of those that are making a crap ton of money from it that you know have shares and I've, I've mentioned this before i've said this before if i was if i was an investor and i wanted to make money and didn't care about people i would invest in big ag big food big farm and then funerals that's where i would invest my money because that's what's going to reap the rewards because we have such a drive and such a push from a political sense and an educational sense in that direction which is you know funding a lot of people who are continuing to make profit off of off of the, the sickness of others anyway side note it made me sad then i so after that i went to the checkout and she started to talk to us again there because we had to wait for her to get all of her stuff through the checkout line and they had to go and check prices and things like that and i'm there just with my key strips going i just just want to buy these ketone strips <laughs> can i just want to do this <laughs> anyway we're having a chat and while we're standing there marcella who's my my youngest daughter um was looking at the easter eggs because they've got easter eggs and there's a whole row of chocolate which is like again hello like come on at least have sugar-free chocolate there right at least have like healthy snacks there but you know they had like all of their Easter eggs that they were selling as a chemist were there, and they were on 40 percent discount because Easter was over. And so she she made a comment. She's like, "Mom, look, they've got Easter eggs." And they're, what does that sign say? And I'm like, "Well, they they're on discount because Easter is over." Um, and then like you know she drew my attention to these things. So I'll put a post up later about that. Uh, but the whole row, the whole front row, while you're standing there waiting to pay for your medication, is chocolate bars. Now, I'm just like, this seems so wrong to me. It seems so wrong to me that people come in here to get medication, to keep themselves alive, to stop them from dying from things like diabetes. And all of this is actually there right in front of them. They have to stand there and wait with it glaring at their face while they're waiting to be served to buy the medication to stop them from dying from things like diabetes heart disease all of the other stuff a lot of them are, are lifestyle diseases not all of them but some of them um and i'm just like what what it just was yeah my brain was going and this is this is what our world is this is what our world is is that for somebody who's trying to be healthy or trying to change their their lifestyle and their habits and what they put in their mouth in order to be feel better have more energy you know remove some of these chronic diseases and lifestyle diseases they've got a battle at every every entrance there's a battle all of the way through and even if they're you know using medication there's a battle here and i think part of my oh, trigger was you know i mentioned at the start of this that my mum had a big giant box of medication and as a child watching her go through that journey, it upset me completely. But she also ate a lot of chocolate. And so seeing that there made me angry because mum mum had a gastric band surgery done. And, you know, whether you choose to go get ga gastric band surgery or lap band surgery, it was called at the time. And then like the other one is now gastric bypass um, or the gastric sleeve. There's a couple of different names that people refer to it as. Um, but seeing that, my mum had the lap band surgery done because she wasn't able to control her weight. And she didn't understand a lot of the things that I understand about the psychology of eating and the psychology of food, as well as if you just eat meat, you don't have a lot of these problems. And if she maybe understood that and maybe I was where I was at the time, she maybe would have had a different scenario, but that's not how things played out. No one was around to tell her that because that was not the, that was not the drive of the pharmaceutical company. And it was not the drive on the understanding of the medical people that she was working with. That makes me mad because there was a lot of money that went into paying doctors and paying psychologists and paying, you know, people for their medical opinion that didn't actually provide her with help. Side note, she went and got the lap band surgery so she could lose weight. 
and it worked. She lost weight and she reversed her diabetes through, through losing the weight um, in the sense that it came under control because she lost weight. But it didn't come under control because of how she changed her eating in the sense of her making a choice. What happened was because um, she had this lap band surgery, it essentially made her a bulimic. Like, so she would, would eat, but then she would go throw up. And the things that she would actually eat, eat and keep down were chocolate bars. And so she, like where other people might have in the bottom of their refrigerator is like the crisper section where you might put vegetables. For me, that was full of chocolate bars. Like it was full of chocolate bars. Um, and I just look at the, the quality of life that she got and how much effort and energy she had put into trying to get her health and trying to get her weight under control and trying to like manage these things and being pointed off in so many directions that all led to some type of shame, some type of failure, because that's what they were. Like, you know, she did Jenny Craig, she did light and easy. She did like all the shakes. She did all of those things. They didn't work. Um, and that's because it misses large components and they're based on, you know, they're based on this starvation principle where you're starving and because you're starving and you don't have the nutrients that your body actually needs, you're constantly fighting with your internal um, battle, this internal battle to try and find and seek out those nutrients that your body actually needs. And so you're constantly hungry and you're constantly trying to fight that battle. And as well as like resetting hormones and all of the other stuff that goes into actually weight managing and actually, you know, changing those things, they're not focusing on that. They're focusing on less calories in, more calories out. Go for your walks, eat less food. We'll give you a number point system. And as long as you stay under that, you're good. Um, and, you know, it really, it really is a limited approach when it comes to weight loss because for me it's a holistic thing. We've got to change how you think about yourself. We've got to change how you value yourself. We've got to change your eating habits and ones that are based on high nutrition where you're ultimately nourishing yourself so much that you actually don't need to eat any more food because you are full of your nutrients. Like, And that's where I see carnivore is. Like, you know, it's easy to do a fast on carnivore because – I wouldn't say start doing fasting on carnival at the start of your journey. I always think people should probably wait until they're about 12 weeks in to start maybe playing with some of that stuff. Um, but you might do it eating fast, which is what I'm doing, which is a sardine fast where I'm just eating sardines. So I'm not going without food. I am eating and I can eat as much as I want to eat and as often as I want to eat but I'm forcing my body to go into ketosis and into autophagy where it's actually cleaning up waste products within my actual cells. And so that's not looked at. That's not a part of the conversation in these weight management programs and nutrient base is not a part of the conversation in a lot of them either, uh, which is again, where I think carnivore is a really beautiful space because you eat a lot of really nutrient dense foods so that you actually aren't hungry, you get to the space of not feeling hungry because you're satisfied and you've hit those satiated spaces where you're satiated, but you're also, your nutrient stores are filling up and your health is getting better versus we're trying to deprive you to squeeze calories out of you. Anyway, again, standing at the front of the line of the chemist, seeing this row of chocolate bars just reminded me of like the challenges that my mum went through and how ultimately she just kind of gave up and went, I'm going to be bulimic with this gastric sleeve and I'm going to eat as much chocolate as I want. Um, and that was basically her life. And it got to the point I was talking to this, I was saying this to Ben the other day, that what happened for mum in the end was that she broke her foot so, um, and it was a really simple thing. Like most people would not break their foot doing this, but she broke her foot doing it. And it was basically walking, basically walking. She broke her foot and the fractures in her foot that she broke would not heal because she didn't have enough nutrients for them to actually heal. Her bone density was so weak from the medication that she had been put on and the diet that she was consuming that her bones were breaking and they weren't able to fix and repair because there was not enough nutrition to actually do that. And your body works on this hierarchy of needs. 
And so teeth, for example, are a really quick sign that your um, bone density is getting low. So if you start to get cavities, for example, if you start to lose teeth, then bone density is low because your teeth are accessory organs and they go first because we don't need teeth to live and it works on a hierarchy of needs. Your heart, however, needs calcium and like we'll need that calcium and phosphorus to beat. To be able to function and pump blood through your body, it needs that those nutrients to actually do that. So if there isn't enough to share around, it scrimps on the accessory organs and the teeth are the first ones to go. Your bones then are shortly after that because you can live without bones and you can live without bone density for a period of time, but you can't live without your heart beating. And so it will give to the vital organs first. And if there isn't enough to share around to the accessory organs, ones which you can live without but are not great, it will scrimp on those. And that was a sign that she didn't have enough nutrition. But that's not what her medical team picked up on because they don't care about nutrition. Nutrition wasn't a factor for them. As long as she was losing weight, they were happy. They didn't care that she had broken bones that could not heal. And so they didn't didn't help her with that. Or their version of help was to give her some cow trait, which, by the way, is baloney. Don't use it. If you need help, reach out. I'll tell you what actually to use. Um, sardines, by the way, are a really good source of calcium. Anyway, again, reminded of mum as I'm standing there in that supermarket and very in that chemist and very glad that I have made the decision to go the pathway that I have. Now, it's not easy. I don't love sardines. Like, I don't go, hey, actually, I'm doing this at the moment, right? I'm trying to trick my brain and convince my husband <laughs> that sardines are amazing. So I open the can and I drink the sardine juice, right? I drink the, the water. I was giving it to the animals and now I'm just like, nope, I'm drinking it. If I'm doing this. I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm, I'm drinking the water and I'm like, yum, sardine juice. <laughs> And it's so funny to watch his face because he's totally grossed out by it. Um, but I'm like, no, it's so delicious. Feel it going in and doing all the good stuff. Like I'm totally like working the, the neuro-linguistic programming in this, this space uh, to help me. And, you know, I'm getting there. Um, but I laugh because like he's so like <laughs> and cringy about the sardines. But I don't love sardines. It's not my favorite. I certainly 100% would be like, yes, give me the steak. I will eat the steak. Give me the butter. 100% I will eat those. But right now I need to move to a different phase in my healing and that is to shift the insulin resistance. And I do want to say for those who have won a little sneaky thing, I am currently my lowest recorded weight as an adult. There was actually one weight that was a little bit lower than where I am now and that was after I came off life support. So uh, 2013, I had my baby. Um, I was on life support after that, came home from the hospital, and I was four kilos lighter than I actually am right now. That's the only other time in a recorded weight uh, as an adult that I have a weight that's lower than where I am right now. So I'm not really counting it because I don't really want to go on life support to get to that space again. Um, and I'm proving to myself that I don't need to be on life support to get to that space again. Um, so essentially I am my lowest adult weight after doing the sardine challenge so far. And that's two days of it. I'm going for 72 hours. Uh, so I, I, tomorrow morning I will weigh myself again and that will be my final weigh in for the, the actual weight loss. And I've lost 2.1 kilos doing the um, sardine challenge. Um, and my ketones are up, which is amazing. I just tested my ketones and I did the, the maths to work out like where do I sit on the Dr. Boz ratio. Uh, and I am, almost. So I'm a 49 on the Dr. Boz ratio. So under 40 is when your body is really starting to shift out and clean out and do a lot of cleaning of the debris um, of waste products and cancer cells. So I'm like, oh, I'm so close to getting into that phase where my body's like cleaning out old, old cancer cells and stuff. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but that's just a little, little sneaky insight. I'll do a proper summing up tomorrow. Um, but I don't love doing that. But I'm doing it because this is the best thing for my body right now. And I'm honoring myself as a human and as a being to look after myself, as well as honoring my family and all of the other things that I'm doing, as well as honoring my clients that I ask to do these things, because I don't ask them to do things that I wouldn't do myself. Um, and so 
I, I go first. I <laughs> do the thing so I can share with you how does it work? What do you need to know? All of that type of stuff. Um, and so that's where I'm at at the moment. But it's ultimately to avoid turning into this beautiful lady who was clearly struggling with a ton of pharmaceuticals to avoid getting to that space in my life because I don't want that that for my life. I don't want that for anybody anybody's life that can avoid it. Like, you know, I, I recognise there are going to be some people that are going to need that because of situations that have happened in their life. But if more people could have knew that they could avoid it and did avoid it, that would be the best outcome for me. All right. I'll just check. I don't think anyone's left me any comments. Um, but I hope you all have an amazing day. Um, I'm going to say goodbye to you now. I'll let you go because I have some patience to see and so on. But enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you have the most amazing day. If you're not on my YouTube, go, go subscribe to my YouTube. I would love to see you over there. Um, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now. See you later. Feel free to come and join me in the Carnival Support Group as well. Happy to see you there too. See ya.